Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the fullness of your power and your wisdom that is available tonight. We worship you. We adore you. We acknowledge you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you for what you will do tonight. Blessed be your name. May our lives never remain the same. May we truly experience change and transformation from glory to glory as by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. said hallelujah are we ready for what God is about to do tonight I said are we ready tonight I want us to conclude this series tonight and I'm trusting God that something definite will happen in our lives that will bring about total and definite transformation and change that we are changed from glory to glory by the spirit and the word of God that is released to us how many of you believe something is about to happen in your life amen the word of God is the number one agency for transformation and that's what I want us to expect every time we listen God is changing us into his image. And I trust that his name will be glorified in Jesus' name. While you are seated, I want you to pray just for 60 seconds and say, Lord, as we conclude this series, may my life never remain the same again. May my life experience true, definite and complete change and transformation i want you to lift your voice and pray while you are seated let my life become the true expression of the spiritual man everybody pray total transformation Lord, I contend, I contend. Let something drop upon my life today that I'll walk out of this door, another man, another woman, breathe upon me. Scripture says, and he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Lord, breathe upon me tonight. Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knees To worship Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. We gladly bow our knees. That's what we've come to do tonight. To worship you, Lord. Let my King 
believe that I announcement before we begin tonight for somebody something new is about to break forth in your life I see a fountain of water bursting forth from the ground rivers are again going to flow in dry places thank you Believe that higher, believe that higher, Jesus, you believe that I believe that. spiritual man let's finish today once again I'm announcing that tonight something would break forth in somebody's life I said something will break forth in somebody's life all right the spiritual man let's try to conclude this teaching today it's been a blessing from the first Sunday we started this series and I'll employ every one of us to take our time to listen to these sermons again and again 
for some of you when next you are going on a retreat you may want to take out time to play the messages and allow it to just infuse into your spirit and your soul there is a portrait that God has that he is using to change us into there is an image a likeness that we are being transformed into and that is what we attempt to do with this series to just x-ray from scriptures the definition and the templates of who a spiritual man really is and I gave us up to number four right number five what is a spiritual man number five a spiritual man is one who abhors the life of self and the flesh the spiritual man is one who abhors the life of self and the flesh the word abhor is spelled a b h o r is one who abhors the word abhors means to stay away from something it means to hate something it means to dislike something it means never to tolerate something that that's what it means to abhor the spiritual man is one who abhors the life of self and the flesh the life of self <coughs> and the flesh so let's look at the scriptures we need to understand what this life of self and life of the flesh is the spiritual man carries another life inside of him it's called the spiritual life there is a huge contrast between the life of the spirit and the life of self or the life of the flesh so it will be good for us to quickly examine all of this so that we can understand why it is in the nature of a spiritual man to hate or to abhor the life of flesh or the life of self you know the bible says for thou loveth righteousness and hated iniquity it's not just enough not to commit sin it is also enough to hate it and you will hate it because of the life that is at work inside of you when you truly carry the spiritual life in you something in you detests the life that this flesh has to offer you know i said it before that when you gave your life to christ your spirit man was awakened and when your spirit one was awakened it brought about consciousness to the life of god consciousness to the person of god but then your soul and your flesh has two kinds of life existing in them please listen carefully your soul has the life called self existing in it that life only cares about that individual that's the thing inside of you that makes you selfish you know the word selfish is from the word self it's from the word soul so a man that lives by the life that exists in his soul that has not experienced genuine transformation by the word of god is naturally selfish it makes him think about him it makes him bother about him that kind of life does not have a place for god that kind of life does not believe that god should be in control that kind of life does not subscribe to the lordship of christ and it is possible for a christian who has the life of god in his spirit to still be living by the life of self which is in the soul it is possible that's why i told you from the beginning of this series that man by nature is a complex being are we together and then your body carries another life in it that life is called flesh 
now when we talk about flesh we are not just talking about this skin that covers you no literally it may mean your body but figuratively from the context of the new testament it has to do with the desire of this body to subscribe to the things of this world remember the bible says in first john chapter 2 verse 15 love not the world not the things in the world the world has an energy and a life that governs it that's the reason why the life in this world is totally alienated from the life of god it is common for a natural man not to have anything to do with god and so john was instructing us because he knew that there were tendencies whereby you could have the spirit of god in you but still subscribe to the life that is of the flesh the life that is inclinated to the things of this world the life that loves and pursues after material things the life that exalts material and physical things as its god that's a kind of life it's called flesh it starts from the desires that are in this body this body has desires in it and so what the life of flesh does it takes advantage of the desires in this body it manipulates those desires and brings you to a point where the desires become your lord the desires begin to rule over you rather than you ruling over the desire being for instance one of the desire of the body we are going to scripture soon one of the desire of the body is to eat god kept that desire there because when you eat energy comes into your body and your life in the body is sustained but it's one thing to eat when you are hungry and it's another thing to love eating that's another different thing entirely so the life of the flesh manipulates your natural desire to eat and manipulates it to a point where you love to eat not only when you are hungry you just like you love eating that state is called gluttony at that point that's the life of the flesh walking it is possible to have the spirit of god in you and be a gluten that's the reason why i want us to understand the variations of this life so that you will deliberately know which you are subscribing to romans chapter 6 let's begin a journey from scripture romans chapter 6 we are going to read verse 1 to 2 verse 5 to 6 and then verse 11 to 14 i would have loved us to read the entire chapter but because of time we'll highlight on the verses that have our pain interest verse 1 to 2 verse 5 to 6 verse 11 to 14 he said what shall we then say no give me new king james what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound next verse certainly not the king james says god forbid he said how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it so paul is giving us a discourse here that now that you have been set free from sin i told you that sin tries to manipulate the desires of your body or the desires of soul of your soul which is self in such a way that you begin to live a life that doesn't please god now we were all condemned before the death of jesus christ we were all condemned to sin and by result death but because of the dying of jesus christ we have been saved we have been rescued from the power of sin now paul is asking a question he said now that you have been delivered from the power of sin should you continue in it meaning that it's a matter of our choice to go back it's like a dog going back to his vomit how many of you have seen that before 
you have witnessed life a dog vomit and then eating the vomit every time a believer goes back and you know into sin that's the biggest illustration that fits that believer it's like a dog going back it's like someone who died and rose again and wants to die again because sin condemned us to death that death starts from separation from the life of God and that death ends in doom and destruction so Paul said should we continue in sin that grace will abound he said no then he asked a question how shall in other words is it possible that we whom this, the nature of sin in us has been killed will now go back to it give us verse 5 he said for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death now when you read in context from verse 3 it begins to use a word called baptism and I took out time to explain baptism the first day of this series I told you that baptism was a word that figuratively describes our union with Christ when the Bible says we have been baptized in Christ is not talking about water baptism for those of us that were not here water baptism is only a physical ritual that is carried out by the doctrine of the church as a proof that a man has accepted the work of Jesus Christ on the cross which is that Jesus died for his sin and was buried in the grave so when you are buried in the water is symbolic of your death and burial so the old man in you which is the nature of sin died when Jesus died and as you are brought out of that water it is the same as you being resurrected to a new life when a man believes in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior baptism in water becomes a physical ritual to illustrate what happens by faith are we together but the word baptism is beyond water baptism baptism means to be submerged now the Bible says by faith we acknowledge that when Jesus died on the cross we died with him we were united with him that's what he's saying here we we're united together in the likeness of his death and certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection verse 6 knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin that's another figurative expression i will explain that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin so what you are saying when you decide to believe in jesus as your savior and your lord is that by believing you have connected yourself to what happened when he died that when he died you died with him and the part of you that died was the part of you that carried the nature of sin of course he wasn't talking about physical death what he was saying was that when you when jesus died the nature of sin in you died with him in other words was separated from you and was crucified with him and the bible says this was because or so that the body of sin or the nature of sin that nature in you that makes you love to sin can be done away with so you are no longer on under the influence of that nature and verse 5 where we read there says just the way we have been united in the likeness of his death will also be united in the likeness of his resurrection when jesus died his spirit was separated from his body and when he resurrected his spirit came back to that body but that body was recreated again that means that as believers your natural form of living is supposed to be powered by the same energy that raised jesus from the dead jesus didn't raise himself back to life the bible says he was raised by the glory of the father it took another power that brought him back from death so the bible says that your christian experience is supposed to be like that so now that you are a believer what happens is you are dead first 
and so the only way that you will live now as a believer and the nature of god in you will find expression is that the same way jesus was raised back to death or back to life by the spirit of god the same way the spirit of god will have to empower you for everyday christian life so the spirit of god is not just giving to speak in tongues he is giving to empower you live the life of christ in you because there are tendencies that the nature of sin in you may want to dominate you again so resurrection is not just when a person comes back from the dead alone resurrection is the default state of a believer that as you are seeing that man or that woman now the life at work inside of him is a different life that person has died and is now a new life at work that life enables the person to please god to live in holiness to live in righteousness and to experience all the fullness of god that is inside of him are we are we do we understand that that's what it means go to verse 11 he said likewise you your, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed okay let's start from verse 10 so that you understand why the word likewise because likewise means if you understand what was written in the previous verse it was an illustration for what he's saying in verse 11 he said for the death that he died speaking of jesus he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to god next verse he said likewise the same way jesus now is alive but is alive because god is alive in him you know that song i'm alive i'm alive in you so jesus being the portrait of a new man in christ now that he resurrected it was no longer himself that was living it was now god that was living through him the bible says in the same way you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin but alive to god that means you are no longer conscious as a believer as a spiritual man you are no longer conscious of sin and its nature inside of you what you are conscious of is the life of god that is inside of you he said but you are alive to god in christ jesus our lord let's go on we are reading down to verse 14 therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust go on and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to god as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to god he says god has done his part he has put to death the nature of sin in you this desire to sin has been killed inside of you when you became born again he said now do not let that means it's now within your power you can decide to go back and resurrect that old nature of sin again how by giving your body to obey its natural desires because one of the ways you see let me tell you something spirits are triggered by desires if you forget anything today forget this one there are two things that allows the perpetuation of spirits on earth number one desires number two patterns if you want a spirit to possess a man let him just establish a pattern of behavior if you want the spirit that is behind immorality to possess you keep fornicating a time will come where if you don't do it you will die at that point you are it's no longer you now there is another spirit that has supernaturally energized that desire it's the same thing with criminals terrorists they know that they are at the risk of their life doing it but there is a spirit that has possessed them to keep killing but it started how by desire now paul says do not let sin reign how 
by fulfilling its law is lost the word lost means desires that means now that i'm a new man in christ if i go back to my old ways i am resurrecting the nature of sin again i am giving my body as an instrument that's what he says there he says do not present your members speaking of your body now as an instrument of unrighteousness that means your body is supposed to be an instrument a servant what is the life of flesh the life of flesh like i explained from the beginning is the life that manipulates the desires of our body to subscribe to the things of this world so if i go back now and begin to commit those things i left it means i have made my body a slave to sin and in other words i have captured my entire self under the nature of sin that's the reason why that means it is possible for somebody to be saved and lose his salvation he says do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to God you say yourselves first and I told you the life of self is exists where in the soul present yourself so your soul must first of all be surrendered to God first then your body can now become an instrument a slave so your spirit is alive in God but your soul must serve your spirit and then your body becomes a slave that way you will no longer be tempted to yield to sin but rather your body becomes a servant to the life that is why fasting and prayer will become normal for you wanting to please God will become normal in fact you will long for it why because you have subjected your body to the desires of your spirit living a life of love becomes normal why because you have used your members as an instrument of righteousness unto God. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Verse 1 to 2, verse 5 to 8, verse 10 to 11, and verse 12 to 13. verse 1 I think we can quote it together whether it's on the screen or not right okay let's read it on the screen one to go there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus now if you are a fan of new creation realities that is not taught with balance you will stop your interpretation of that scripture there but thank God it is bold enough for you to see that there was a command there he says who do not walk according to the flesh so these people that there is no condemnation you know what sin does sin brings condemnation that's the reason why the last time you fornicated how did you feel the last time you stole it, it was like something died in you isn't it you you felt unholy in fact if anybody had told you pray that time the last thing you want to do is pray why because sin brings condemnation but the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus then he went on to describe those who will experience the reality of the same he said who walk not walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit so two kinds of life there the flesh and the spirit there is therefore now no condemnation that is a legal aspect of our salvation but it will be applied to those who have given themselves to become slaves to the life of the spirit they are no longer controlled by the desires of their body or the desires of their soul you know your body makes you want to please the world and your soul makes you want to please self the soul naturally is self-conscious the body is world conscious but the bible says it's only those who have made themselves slaves to the life that is of the spirit it's just like a device that has two ways of power and you can decide by use which 
which aspect of power you are using that means if you are a believer and you walk after the flesh there is condemnation to you abby uh-huh let's go on verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has done what made me free from the law of sin and death verse 5 now so you are free from the nature of sin and the death that comes with sin but look at verse 5 he said for those who live according to the flesh how do they behave he said they set their minds ha huh. that means it was deliberate the last time you sin don't say it's by mistake there's nothing like that have you heard people say that it was the devil so you went and stole you say why did you still say it was the devil i didn't know what came over me it was the devil you know a judge in a law court will not listen to that one they will still sentence you even if you cry you feel remorse you say it's the devil they don't know devil their own is the soul that sins uh-huh. the bible says this is how you know those who live according to the flesh this is how you know the life of the flesh they deliberately set their minds their minds is where their thoughts are they are thinking that means you have to be careful what governs your thought life proverbs 23 verse 7 says what as a man thinketh so he is so if you want to be trapped in the nature of sin it's easy it's just for you to set your mind to the flesh the flesh loves the things of this world the flesh reverences and adores and worships the things of this world and yet the bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and do what lose his soul he said but those who live according to the spirit they set their minds on the things of the spirit next verse please for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is what life and peace the word carnal is from the word can 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 is a greek rendition of flesh so it's talking about the life of the flesh when it says to be carnally minded it means a man whose mind is governed by the desires of his sinful nature so it starts from the mind like i said and then it becomes your reality the bible says the end of that life is what death you may not die physically immediately but the death will begin from your spirit your spirit man little by little your consciousness of the life of god of of of, of god will begin to reduce that's the reason why the first time you stole your conscience pricked you but if you keep stealing a time will come where your conscience will not prick you the bible says their conscience has been seared remember i said a, a, the spiritual man is one who abhors the life of self and flesh he hates it the reason is because he has set his mind to live the life of the spirit that that life of the spirit initiates a hatred inside of him if you are here if at any point of your life you begin to enjoy sin you are in trouble you need help you need deliverance you need counseling if you need if flogging is possible self they need to flog you somehow because if the life of the spirit is in you it will make you hate it and that's you see that's what separates us from unbelievers and that's what separates us from carnal christians there is they, they have awakened by reason of desires they have awakened the nature of sin in them so to bribe is normal for them they call it a tip they say just give and small something just find and small something you know you, they, they have they have carved a name try to make sin look white and if we are not careful it is gradually trying to penetrate and become our lifestyle as believers but the bible says thou lovest righteousness and hatest you have to hate it a sign that you are truly healthy as a spiritual man is a hatred for sin such that even when you commit the sin you will hate
you look at our world today our world is surrounded there is there is iniquity and if everywhere it's no longer sin it's iniquity you know iniquity is the is the foundation of sin huh iniquity is bigger than sin is the very nature that sponsors sin that's the reason why the bible said of lucifer he said until iniquity was found in thee question what had lucifer done as at that time nothing so sin is not just when you commit a wrong act sin is when you begin to allow the nature which is iniquity to breathe you can entertain lustful thoughts and you don't have a problem with that you can watch a video now of a message and then remove it and watch pornography and go back and still watch when you it starts like that please be seated you know if the internet now you don't need to tell them to pop up pornography they will not pop up a message is and some of you you are designed in such a way that five second exposure and that picture cannot leave your mind and then it begins to create a mindset the bible says for to be carnally minded that's why it, that's why you have to hate it you hate it to a point where you build barricades around two believers fornicate and then they say ah, we don't know what came over us we don't know what came over us my question is what are two of you unmarried people doing in the same place Let me, you see if we must stand for God in these days we must we must we must keep alive that nature in our spirits that hates sin hate it hate it even if people call you a Jew hate it otherwise a time will come where it will subtly become a norm you know temptation is in stages it's in stages say see that juice inside the fridge it's not your juice though say just open it open it open it and then you open it you see the juice say oh, yeah, close it back you close it back then the next time I say open and check where that it is still cold then you go and check again say no it's not my it's not my juice and you close and gradually what the devil is trying to do through your name is trying to first initiate your desire to like that thing because once your desire has affinity with that act <laughs> before you know what's happening it becomes a normal thing for you it starts with desire even knowing god starts with a desire if you don't have a desire to know god i don't care how many services you attend in a year you will come in and go back the same person it is that desire that the holy spirit uses as a bridge to begin to permeate your life same thing with the life of the flesh then while you are sleeping you say that juice nobody go drink ammo and now you know cold again you know say juice they sweet when it cold go back go carry him before the tea and before you know you carry you say no i say no carry him now nah. and then you carry by the time you finish drinking the juice that's when your eyes will now open a spiritual man is one who abhors it the nature of iniquity is everywhere in our world today is in your office is in your school before i pass you sleep with me say no no i can't do that I say ah that's what everybody everybody is doing you know that's the first thing they will say that's what everybody all your mates this one that's what they are doing it it starts by making you feel that it is natural it is common then you accept it but when you have the life of the spirit in you you have to learn to say no what did joseph say when potiphar's wife asked him to lie with her joseph said, how will i do this wickedness if you don't paint sin as wickedness you will find joy doing it hmm? please sit down he said why why should i do this wickedness before god and man and the next time she came and took his clothes nobody told joseph 
that nature in you that makes you hate sin will make it easy for you to flee but the reason why you didn't flee the last time and you were trapped was because the nature of god in your spirit man is already dying because the moment you begin to trigger another nature by obeying its desires you are killing the other one that's why the bible says death to sin but alive to god so if you begin to kill your desires for god you are awakening the nature of sin and for you to be spirit, a spiritual man you must be one who is spiritually minded give us verse 10 and 11 let's close on this point He says, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. So, verse 10 gives us two disparities. If Christ is in you, your body will still make it easy for you to commit sin. It's still yielded and susceptible to the flesh. He said, but your spirit is alive. But God didn't stop there. He decided to help us by the next verse. He said, but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies last verse said because christ is in you in your spirit man you are alive to god you hate sin but your body is not born again and your body will never be born again say amen say amen now you broke your heart when i made that statement this body is not born again you wait as a young man you wait till you see a half naked woman that's when you know that the body is, is truly not born again when you were saying lord jesus it was helping you to say it, but nothing happened to it you wait until they offer you three million how much was your salary two hundred thousand and then falsify documents they offer you three million ah please be seated so these are verse 10 gives us a disparity it gives us this is the state of a man in his spirit he's alive to god but his body is alive to sin and so this will be a man that struggles he's up today down tomorrow up today down tomorrow that's the state of the man described in verse 10 but for god to help us he took us to another dimension verse 11 he said but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells inside of you it has the ability to give its life even to your body it th that means that it will give you the ability to put your body under discipline under control to a point where temptation becomes hard for you to fall into do we understand that that's what it means there so the holy spirit helps you to live above sin i think in verse 13 it says if we live by the flesh we will die but if by the spirit we put to death the deeds of the flesh so it's not just enough to have the spirit of god in you but you must come to a point where the spirit of god dominates your flesh it superimposes on your flesh is the spirit of god the last time you wanted to steal that told you no that no that came from your heart is him and the moment you obey that no let me tell you something that happened this week i think on tuesday or so they were doing some work in my house and then i, I was supposed to go out please be seated sir i was supposed to go out and then in my mind i wanted to go out but deep within me it was like no so i took money took my credit my my debit card walked out of the gate and some of my boys they were there one of them asked me say are you going out sir i said yes i'm going out leave me i walked to the road i was still struggling my mind was saying go go my heart was saying no I'm showing you how this two nature reflects inside of you. As soon as I entered the Napep, I felt like somebody walked out of me. Have you been discussing with somebody before and, so, and the person walks out on you? Or maybe you are arguing with somebody and the person is trying to make you see the truth. And because the person sees you are stubborn, it just keeps quiet. As soon as I sat down, and then my peace disappeared, I told the guy, I said, stop, 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 stop. He stopped. He said, Oh God, wait till happen. I said, I forgot something. 
he said where i said my house is here he said let's go i said no no, no just leave me i came down as i came down from the napa i was saying sorry 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 that's how the bible says if by the spirit you put to death you come to a point where you totally numb your flesh and you make it obey what is in your spirit every time the enemy tempts you with sin is your destiny that is on the line that's why the bible called esau, esau the bible called him a fornicator in hebrews chapter 12 why esau didn't sleep with any woman that was not his wife no the real sinner was jacob but the bible says because of a piece of bread he exchanged so what is fornication before god fornication is not when two people sleep together alone the nature of fornication is when you exchange spiritual benefit for physical gain every time the temptation of sin comes your destiny is on the line every time five minutes of sex takes away an anointing that should deliver an entire generation spiritual man you have to hate it tell your neighbor hate sin no you, you are whispering i say tell them tell them hate sin tell him again say hate sin hate it with your life even when your whole body is vibrating as your body is vibrating learn to turn about huh and run that's why the bible says flee it, it didn't say catwalk you are catwalking into destruction there is a way that cement right onto a man at that point your body will make you feel it is pleasure but the bible says the end thereof is death there are many people who fell out with god in the bible who lost or sold their destinies on the platform of sin reuben was supposed to be the firstborn he couldn't avoid the temptation of adultery he slept with his father's wife and the birthright was taken away from him not only was he taken away from him the reubenites became scattered what did jacob say of him he said let them be scattered in israel and unstable as water so one man's act affected generations unborn the next time you want to yield to sin remember what i'm saying until moses came 430 years later and said let reuben live and not die one man's righteousness saved an entire generation just the way one man's disobedience hate it if you have to lose your job because you hate the life of the flesh lose it it's more honorable than for you to stay and keep dying in corruption that's the problem with our country it's not like we don't have every kind of resource the, the corruption has eaten deep into the fabrics of society it doesn't matter if they put a professor as a dg of whatever or as a minister or so so and so no no matter how trained they are mentally the life of flesh supersedes any academic work that's the reason why saviors must arise we must raise people that will take over these spheres righteous and holy people that will see a bribe and say no whether you are a politician you're a military officer you are you work in a humanitarian organization it's time for us to begin to awaken the life of god that is in us even as a pastor you know that it's not every seed you collect as a pastor there are times people have brought money to me and the holy spirit said no don't collect this one and guess what that's the time i'm broke then we start arguing inside say, are you sure i should not collect didn't your word say he that bringeth eh? a cup of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet the holy spirit said this one is not your own you eat it you eat your destiny there are sometimes we even collect the seed okay this one is your own you collect it and the holy spirit says, oh yeah go and give so so person ah and i notice that every time i disobeyed god his voice becomes faint for every time you disobey the bible says in acts chapter 5 verse 32 that he giveth the holy spirit to those who obey him every time you disobey god and you live in the life of the flesh the voice of god becomes faint to a time where you become so confused why you can't hear his voice because the bible says thou art of a purer eyes to hate to behold iniquity 
If you are with me, say amen. May God give us grace. May God cause that your nature inside of you, the nature of God in your spirit be alive to hate sin. I want you to pray in one minute or just pray and say, Lord, because of my destiny in you, for the sake of my walk with you, increase the desire of your spirit in me to hate sin. By myself, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't exercise dominion over this nature. But give me grace. Give me grace. Many things are at stake when you yield to that life. So let my heart be the temple of your spirit. May my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be your holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i love to know your glory i want to offer the sacrifice of praise fill this temple fill my body until the nature of sin is dead in Fill this temple. Fill this temple. Fill this temple. With your spirit. Listen, as I close on this note. That is why every day that passes, you must be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit means at that state, the Holy Spirit is now in control. And He helps you deaden the desires of your flesh. There's such a place like that. Where you look at Satan and his temptation and laugh to his face and walk away. That's the point we must get to. It's not a problem for God to lift you. But God is seeing a tendency that will make you betray him when you are up there. Please be seated. Number six. What is a spiritual man? A spiritual man is one who believes. Okay, sorry. A spiritual man is one who is totally surrendered to the will of God. A spiritual man also is one who is totally surrendered to the will of God. Jesus taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Next line. Thy will be done in earth. Do you have it? Matthew 6 verse 10. In King James Version. Notice the word he used. He says, Thy will be done in. He didn't say, Thy will be done on. In. Because there are two kinds of earth. The earth that we inhabit and the earth that habits us. The earth which is this ground we are standing on and then the earth that we are living in. Speaking of this body. Speaking of, figuratively speaking of your life on earth. That the reason why God gave you life and he kept you on earth is because he wants you to be a channel through which his government will find expression. He wants you to be a channel through which his will will be done and creation will be reconciled. You know because of the sin of Adam, creation has been divorced from God. Creation is no longer being sustained by the life that comes from God. So God wants to raise men that are after his will in the kind of the second Adam called Jesus Christ. Men that will see to it at all times that his will finds expression. What did Jesus say in Luke chapter 22 verse 42? The last prayer he made before he went to the cross. He knew he was going to die a shameful and a painful death. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. That was his will. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, 
but your will be done have you gotten to that place we've spoken about hating the life in the flesh and self but can you come to a point where you are totally subscribed to the will of god we have a lot of christians these days who are set out to fulfilling their own ambition we have a lot of christians who plan their career plan their lives and isolate god for you to live in the will of god god must first of all be your priority for god to be your priority he must be your obsession first he has to be someone you think about you have to be crazily in love with god you have to be mindful of him the bible have spoken to us about god being mindful of man but when will man become mindful of god you make god your priority you don't move until god speaks you decide to tie your entire life around god even when you are at the risk of shame even when you are at the risk of delay within the context of men you know sometimes when god is trying to train a man what the world calls it is delay because your your mates have gone ahead of you but god wants to train you with capacity so that you can have the virtues that will sustain your greatness tomorrow and that's why he keeps you to wait are you willing to wait at that point if it is god's will for you to stay for six months without a job as long as it will serve his will that's what i call a dead man when you come you are you, at that point you are already dead while living because you are not living for yourself any longer jesus said not my will but your will be done and it was that confession that strengthened him to the cross if he had if he had decided to do it on his will he would have died before he got to the cross many times he had lost blood many times he fell down but you must understand that before jesus died on that cross figuratively he had already died in the garden he died to his will in other words from that point he was no longer living for himself and so it was the will of god that took him to the cross when you decide to live according to the perfect will of god for your life his grace will drive you even to places that men cannot tread though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil why he's only with you when you are living in his will things that should kill people will rather make for your rising who is a spiritual man one who totally surrenders total surrender total surrender <laughs> you know what <laughs> some of us you have given god other sides of your life but your career you isolated it from god any part of your life that god has been isolated from and how will you know that god is isolated from your life that part of your life will not have his word to sponsor every time the will of god is subscribed to by a man there will be scriptures there will be definite word from god that will power that man there will be promises from god that will power his existence so i'm not working in that organization because of the money or because i have friends there no the will of god sent me there x-ray your life now where you are is it the will of god for you somebody told my father in the lord he said i don't like the grace of god he asked him for something and my father said, okay i don't have it now but by the grace of god he said no 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 apostle don't use grace of god because for me grace of god delays sometimes when you decide to live by the will of god it's better sometimes god will delay you sometimes god may allow some afflictions to come not because he hates you but there is something that god wants to trigger inside of you Paul said always having in our body the dying of our Lord Jesus so that the life there is a life inside of you but if that life must be revealed this current life must die the Bible says even the youth shall be weary and the young men will utterly fall but they that wait men call it delay but we call it waiting upon the Lord I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting 
on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. even when it doesn't make sense. I don't mind waiting. When Moses was 40 years, that would have been when God would have called him. But since God didn't call him, he decided to call himself. You know, there are people like that. God didn't call them, they called themselves. <laughs> the end of that kind of life is frustration and death. Moses went out by his own strength. You see, when you are living by your will, you will discover you have to struggle for everything. You have to bribe this person. You have to lobby for contract. You have to kneel down before this person. You have to use this. Con Every time you find yourself struggling for a particular thing, it may be that that thing is taking you away from the will of God. Or you are not doing it according to God's prescribed pattern for you. God waited till Moses was 80 years. White beards, no strength. And God said, oh yeah, it's time to start your work. And some of us are there like that. You are a young lady. There is a mighty ministry that is inside of you that God wants to use to bless the nations. But your obsession now is marriage. And God knows if he allows you to marry. The Bible says, "He, those that are married, they do what? Papa, you don't know those scriptures. 1 Corinthians 7. He said, for anyone who is married, gives himself to his husband or his wife, how he or she may please. And so you are a young lady. God knows that if you marry now, your total attention will be taken away from God and you will no longer be able to press into God to gather the capacity. So he decides to delay you for five years. Now you are in the third year and you are already insulting God in your heart. Sometimes the will of God is crazy. But that's the path of life. That's what Jesus meant when he said, narrow is the way. He was not talking about heaven. Mm -mm. The gate of heaven is very big. Old. He was talking about whose will you decide to live by. God will constrain you at some point. spiritual man is one who is surrendered finally on this note let me teach you how it works your soul which is where the life of self is is a part of you that makes you want to live to please you but you have to dedicate that part of you to please the spirit of God that is in your spirit your soul has three components your will your emotions and your mind it happens to be that your will is where your decision your seat of decision is your emotions is where your feelings are and then your mind is where your thoughts are it is your thoughts that affect how you feel and how you feel affects your judgment your decision so therefore if you want to truly live to please the will of God your mind which is where your thought is must be transformed according to the image of christ you must allow yourself to be brainwashed by the word of god have you come to a point where you have one scripture or two for every area of your life it's not just about cramming or quoting scripture it shows a man who has so fallen in love with the word of god and he has allowed that word to change how he thinks that was what happened with job he said all the days of my appointed time will i wait look at what he said he said if a man dies will he live again he said but all the days of my appointed time i will wait what he meant was that this condition is capable of killing me but something inside of me tells me that in the midst of this god will again bring salvation so your mind must be transformed your thought pattern how do you think have you allowed the word of god to change your thought pattern you know when you begin to entertain some slangs around you it just shows how worldly your mind is huh i know this one is heavy but 
when you find some common language some worldly language with some believers he just tells you how that their mind has been partly transformed not completely but you know that a man is transformed when superficially you can no longer trace him to any sociological ethnocultural or geographical context where you cannot look at him and say ah he they behave like margi people no when the word of god has worked on his mind that's true transformation when you change the way you think it will change how you feel you will feel joy in the midst of sorrow and then like job you can make a decision with your words and say for but i know that my redeemer liveth and he shall stand at last when you see men make this statement they look like mad people that's a man that sold out to the will of god that's a man that even death will run from jesus didn't die he gave his life the bible says his last word on the cross was what into your hands i commit my spirit jesus didn't die when you are living in the will of god death has no power over you seven accidents you will come out untouched they keep attacking that road but because the will of god sent you there is it that you leave before the attack oh god because he leaves i can face tomorrow you know what we have to edit that song based on my own experience now eh? based on my own life now i have decided to figure i have right now i'm living in the complete will of god so for me because he leaves I have seen tomorrow because he lives. Oh, fear is gone because I know. So my life is worth the living. Life is worth the living just because Paul said if we boast, we make our boast in the Lord. It's the truth. I've died many years ago. This man that is alive is not the man you know. I'm not afraid of death. What shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation trials distress famine hunger peril the sword he says as it is written we are killed all day for your sake and accounted as sheep to the slaughter for your sake untimely death is when a man dies outside of the will of god it's not when you die when you are 30 years jesus died 33 years till today 2000 years later the world has not recovered and will never recover untimely death is when a man dies without understanding the will of god for him it's a miserable death i'm confident the bible says yeah in all these things we are more there is nothing he said for i am persuaded that nothing in this life because you don't have money in your account you can't pray again no the Bible says, neither death nor life, nor principalities nor powers, nor angels nor demons, nor this life or the life to come shall separate. He's a dead man. We have surrendered to the will of God. If suffering will please him, let, let us suffer. What did John say in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9? He said, I, John, your brother in tribulation. Did Paul not say to experience the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable the one we want is the power of his resurrection how about the fellowship of his suffering how about jesus makes you a partner in pain with him and if he makes you a partner in pain with him he makes you a partner in gain the disciples ask jesus please sit down sir they say we that we have left everything to follow you what's our gain now hmm. jesus say your gain he said i tell you you sit upon the 12 thrones and judge the 12 tribes of israel 
In other words, Jesus promoted them to become older than the patriarch in the kingdom. That's why in heaven you have 24 elders. The patriarchs, the 12 of them in the Old Testament, and these 12 in the New Testament. What did these guys do to qualify like those ones? Nothing. They only surrender to the will of God. Don't be afraid. When God tells you something to do, do it. You want to wed, and all you have in your account is 50,000, and God says, sow it as a seed. Can you be crazy enough to believe God's will for you? I don't think there's anything God asks me to give now that I can't give. I've seen the end. I saw that I didn't die when I gave. So, <laughs> please sit down. Number seven, lastly, let's close. What is a spiritual man? Number seven. A spiritual man is one who believes in the genuine power of God. That's why we close tonight. One who believes in the genuine power of God. A spiritual man is a man and a woman of power. Is a man that believes in and contends for the full expression of the power of God. Is a man that will not tolerate weakness or mediocrity. Even though we are weak, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let me tell you something about a believer. The most powerful institution on earth. The most powerful institution on earth. Is a believer. Put it on laugh for me. The most powerful institution is not the nuclear mines of of China or Russia. No, it's not the White House of U.S. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. You know that song. But there is something about. All of those things will pass away. But the power that resides in a believer. Many of you, I, I want to talk about this power thing before we pray. Because a lot of us carry so much in us. But you are not aware of what you carry. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. We are not going to read but you can put it on the screen. The Bible used four words in Greek. To describe the power that is in a believer. The power that is available to a believer. When the Bible uses four words, it means that even the words are not enough to quantify the amount of power that is in you. The power that is at work in a believer potentially is unquantifiable. It has no limit. You say, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? according to the to the working of them of his mighty power ah. is it true regardless of what you hear in church it is true a believer is powerful a true spiritual man is one who lives in the consciousness of this reality now unto him that is able to do Ephesians 3 20 exceeding abundantly far above all we can ask or think this is the twist of the verse he say according to the power that is at work where in us not outside you god took all of himself and kept it inside of you please be seated it's one thing for you to know it. It's another thing for you to be conscious of it. It's another thing for you to walk in that reality. Forget about the affliction that the devil has plagued you with. One of the first things that the enemy will fight in a man is your ignorance. Once he can ensure that you are ignorant of what you carry, you can be a giant and still run with your tail between your legs. The spiritual man is one who believes. And it's not just enough to believe you contend for that power that there is something inside of you that is capable of commanding change there is something in you that is capable of changing things naturally or supernaturally changing things in on earth and in heaven jesus didn't say whatever you bind in heaven heaven is the supernatural and and, 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 you, and you know the greater realm but the bible says that whatever you bind on earth 
even heaven is affected by the change you command on earth that's how powerful you are Ephesians 3 verse 10 or 12 rather he said to the intent that by the church the manifold wisdom of God may be made known to principalities and powers you are there afraid of a small witch in your neighborhood the Bible says we are going to teach you know what it means to teach people like the lecture David gave at Goliath you know that was a lecture the lecture he didn't write test because before he wrote test he died he told him he said you come before me with spear sword and javelin but i come before you in the name of and he said in the name of this god i will cut off your head i'm sure goliath was looking at this small chap what is he saying david was conscious that the power inside now this was david a man in the old testament that didn't have the holy spirit in him and jesus said in acts chapter one ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come that means that the believer of the new testament order is greater than the saints of old why is it that the saints of old walked in the power of god much more than us a man stood and shut the heavens no rain he stood and prayed and rain came the bible says he gathered his belt together and outran an entire chariot if you think Samson's strength was because he had muscles, why were they looking for his strength? Yet he would go and catch the gate of a city and put it on his shoulder and trek four miles to the mountain. You forget about what they've been telling us in church. The fact that these things are not taught in church doesn't mean it's not true. A believer is truly powerful. Don't use your lack of resort to excuse a reality i believe that the same strength something had that time can still be exhibited the bible says they shall run and not be weary it's not natural to run and be and not be weary that's a spiritual man a man that shakes off the timidity around him and arises in genuine power power that shakes the gate of hell around you a man that can stand in his office people are dying every month and lift up his voice and speak to the spirit of death and say thus far have you come and thus far that shall you not go a man that can wake up one morning and shut the mouth of the grave over his family that's the kind of power we are talking about real power somebody say real power i'm telling you you don't know how much you have inside of you that's why you're always afraid every nightmare you stand up and fast by the time you if you fast like that when you have five nightmares in a night i'm very sure you become slim before one week every small thing that you are afraid no 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 witches are operating in your neighborhood because you have not realized how much power you carry the cause in your family is still resting on people why because a man of power has not arisen the bible said through the greatness of his power shall your enemies submit there is a dimension of power if we show this world they will naturally submit how do you think it will happen when the bible says that the wealth of the hidden will be laid up don't you know that there is a superiority that will display that will humble principalities and power let me tell you the revival of the last days is not a revival of talk for the kingdom of god god is not in word but in power power enough of the talk i believe in the message i believe in knowledge but it's time for us to begin to display what we carry the reason why they don't respect our christianity is because it lacks power when you wake up and say a thing and it comes to pass say a thing it comes to pass say a thing it comes to pass after three times they will respect you and you know what the bible says in ephesians 1 as we close that the church is the body of christ your body is what gives you the ability to exercise the energy you have that means if your body is in a bad state you can be brilliant you can be intelligent you can have so much energy in you but you remain at a dormant state the bible says the church is the body the reason why jesus christ is still being contested in the covens in your village is because the church in that village are powerless all we know about church these days is to come and sing him give offering do thanksgiving and go 
it's time for ferocious men and women to arise in the church enough of this weakness enough of this fear for god has not given us the spirit of timidity and fear but of power power that can heal the sick power that can raise the dead very true power that can turn the captivity upside down or right side up in the family a spiritual man is one who believes i tell you the truth till tomorrow till i die till i leave this world i believe in the power of god the little i've seen in my life is enough to make me or motivate me to press for more there's so much inside of us that we must release there is power in your name miracles happen in your name we lift our voice to praise it's you there Are you ready to pray? Stand up on your feet. Let me share a testimony with you and we'll pray. A month ago, somebody called me from Kaduna. Maybe she will listen to this message. I don't know. Said her husband was in a court martial case. They were going to court martial him the following week. And I prophesied to her. I told her your husband will be promoted. That's the last thing you want to say. You, you understand how it is unknown to me this was any september the husband had already been they, they were already considering them for promotion this month october and now he was to be court martial the next week by his own ogao and what's the word of the lord your husband shall be promoted and we prayed and i left her i'm sure she doubted but me no two days ago after praying i had a phone call she says sir my husband has been promoted where did the court marshal go to i'm talking about a power that can cause change if you don't begin to become conscious of this power many things will happen around you and you will blame god somebody say Instead of crying, where is the God of Elijah? It's time for us to begin to cry, where are the Elijahs of God? It's true. The reason why you prayed and God didn't answer was because maybe that was not a prayer point again. It was for you to exercise authority. The Bible says, as many as believed in, to them he gave power. We have to be conscious of what we carry. We have to be conscious of what we carry. And this night, I'm going to give you the next two, three minutes we are going to pray and contend for the power of god to begin to be manifested in our lives you don't have to be a pastor no you don't have to be i'm not just talking about the gifts of the spirit no i'm talking about power real power a force that imposes on demonic powers a power that humbles witchcraft in your family a power that humbles the manipulation of occultic men in the next two three minutes i want you to raise your voice and say father make me a vessel of your power make me a container of your life of your power of your glory enough of this ordinary life it's time to be truly supernatural it's time to truly be supernatural it's time to truly be extraordinary Jesus said, go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely give. It's inside of you. It's inside of your spirit. If only you will contend. If only you will activate it by prayer. If only you will activate it by faith. It's right on your inside. It's right on your inside. <laughs> 
just whispering this one in my ear listen I want you to pray and say Lord let your power swallow up every reproach in my life and in my family whatever has mocked the power of God in your life whatever has mocked the name of Jesus in your family can you lift your voice and say father let your power swallow up every prophesy over us this evening and I want you to believe it because there's going to be a mighty eruption in your life from today 
the power of God in his fullness is about to be manifested keep that situation side by side with the power of God and watch the God of wonders come true for you lift your hands first pray I'm praying for you anything that has mocked the name of Jesus in your life in your family any reproach any predicament any situation any calamity I don't care how long it has been in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died and rose again I declare let it be swallowed up by the power of God let it be swallowed up by the power of God let it be swallowed up by the power of God he said and death is swallowed up in victory everything that has brought death affliction to your family everything that has kept the destinies of men held captive in your family whether by witchcraft whether by occulting power whether by ancestral curses whether by generational yokes in the name of jesus christ i send the power of god to your family now i send the power of god to your family now let those yokes be broken now let those yokes be broken now let those yokes be broken now The Lord is saying, I should cause the spirit of affliction in families. Lift your hands. I cause the spirit of affliction. Sicknesses in families. I cause that spirit. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. There are families that the spirit of death has been invoked over. Every time it's the end of the year, the lives of people in your family has, have been threatened. The Bible says the last enemy that will be defeated is death. I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. And in the name of Jesus, I banish death from your family and from your life forever. 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 The yoke is broken. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you and I decree and declare that from today, you will be a vessel and a container of the power of the life of the grace of God. Take that power to your office. Take it to your school. Take it to your job. Take it to your business. Take it to your house. Receive the power of God now. Receive the power of God now. Receive the power of God now. I pray for you every spiritual gift that is hidden inside of you whether to your knowledge or not I declare I decree and declare by the effectual working of the Spirit of God let those giftings come alive now let them be stirred up now let them come alive now let them come alive now begin to walk in the full expression of those giftings heal the sick Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Let it be your portion now and forever. If there's such a thing as the grace to hate sin, receive that grace now. And from today, you become stronger than your previous temptations. I said you become stronger than your previous temptation. Listen, the Bible says, For God is able to provide a way of escape. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but anyone here that is under demonic surveillance, temptations around you seeking to make you fall in an attempt to rob your destiny, I pray that the Lord of Sabbath will provide a way of escape for you. Let a way of escape be provided for you. In the name of Jesus.
Wave your hands and give God praise. Lord, teach us how to do your will. Thy will be done. You know that song? Thy will be done. To do your 